Hello, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we're delighted to have you here. Um, it was very awesome, very exciting to see all of you here to join us on this special night. Um, it is our second night performing. Yesterday went really well, so we are glad to, to put on the same show for you. Before we get started, I'd like to make uh, some special announcements. First off, I'd like to give a special thank you to Amaya Hitch and Lorelai Johnson, who are our tech director and stage manager for the show. Without them, we would not have gotten a lot of this done. Um, I'd also like to point out that this show is an original show. That means that it was written and directed by us, which means that this is the first time this show's really ever been done. Um, before we begin, I would like to issue a content warning. Um, this show does explore mature themes as well as some mature language. There is violence in the show, um, as well as murder. Um, <laughs> I don't, yeah, right, awesome. Um, so with, without further ado, um, thank you so much for coming, and please enjoy the show. Gets 
on top of her, and he begins to scrape over her. Soon, the girl's body stops moving. The man stands over the girl's lifeless body in shock, realizing he just killed her. Suddenly, the ground begins to shake. Lights flicker. The girl's body thrusts up as if her heart was trying to emerge from her chest. A ghost works its way out of the corpse. The man shoots at it.
there was a dripping sound, almost like a broken faucet. A little drip, drip, drip. And so this startles her, and as she does every night, she sticks her hand down and fills the lid. At last, she seems to be more at ease because she feels a lot safer. Now, morning comes, and still there's that same little dripping sound. Drip, drip, drip. So she asks her father to investigate it. He goes to the bathroom and that's when things get dark. You see, that dripping sound was not of a broken faucet, but of the blood of her dog. Somebody, we don't know who, but somebody had killed her dog, gutted it. And all throughout the night was a dripping sound. And written on the walls in blood was humans can live too. You see, it wasn't her dog that was leaving her that night, but in fact, someone else. Write the story as yes. now. We have eight more stories to say. That means the night a little bit more. But before we continue, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit more professionally, if you know what I mean. You see, I was born in a little town called Salem, Massachusetts. Many people consider it Halloween town after the Salem witch trials. As a matter of fact, that's the time I was born. And so, I lived a life of mystery, never had many friends, always by myself. In fact, it wasn't until I found this house. You see, I call this house Deadwood Manor, named after a very important place to find. But I discovered something special about this place, something unnatural. It seems to have a hobby of telling stories. And so, Every 100 years, I like to invite people to come see it, to come explore the house, see what it has to offer as it offered me. So that is why you are here. And I must say, I'm more than delighted to see that you have accepted my invitation to be here. But nonetheless, let us get on with the next story of tonight. But before we do, I must warn you, I think it may send shivers down your funny bone. But at last, you have to see it for yourself. So, with my honor, allow me to present the second story of our night. I call it Dairy 52.
Okay. It didn't work out so well, so I buried There was the monk king on the second one. Okay. Well, that's what you can do. And where did you get super heavy soldier has not had any
because you watched the movie, you sure you're not cheating? <laughs> on to the next one. This one's more so based on a true story, made famous by Ed and Lorraine Warren, and his one creepy little girl's doll. Did you say the conjuring? You said Annabelle. Are you sure? Because it is Annabelle, congratulations. You are correct. Now let's make these next ones a little harder. Let's see. One very creepy circus clown and it's Pennywise. I'm to think you all are cheating. You're getting away way too fast. Yes, the correct answer is Pennywise. On to the next one. Let's test it. Let's see. George A. Romero, they're not entirely dead. And one might say they come from the living night. Yes, you are correct. It is Night of the Living Dead Zombies. I mean, I guess I'll more my fault because it's probably a little easier. But nonetheless, let's move on. Let's see. Some say he comes from hell. He's got one fancy Rubik's Cube. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, the answer is Pinhead. You don't gotta rub it in my face. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm gonna stop the game there, not because you know, we have to go, but I think you all are cheating. <laughs> Anyways, on to the next story. Allow me to present to you our third story of the night. Wake up. Thank mm -hmm. you. 